Hey there, my name's Ryan Kingsline and welcome to level three, structure of the head. In this lesson, our goal is to learn a basic roadmap for the human face that we can take to helping us get a better likeness or to create work from our imagination that's more authentic and more realistic. You remember roadmaps, right? Well, maybe this is more like a subway map. A subway map is really a, just an efficient way to kind of divide up the city and instead of thinking about all the different city blocks and all of their names, we end up just thinking about and worrying about one subway stop that we want to focus on. And that's what these lines do. If you look at a road map or a street map all by itself, sometimes it can be confusing just to know where you are in the map, right? See, a map can help you kind of uh, navigate through the complexities or it can become the complexity itself you have to have the right map. And that's what I'm gonna give you in this lesson. The first one that we're gonna start with is the nasal labial fold. The important thing about this fold that a lot of people miss is that it starts above the nostril. It helps define the alar facial juncture, which is a triangle that you can see in front three quarters and in some side views. It also helps define the nasal labial fat pad right above it. Then if we move to the other side of the nasal labial cheek fat, we're gonna see two lines. They kind of look like one line, but it's actually two lines. On one side, it's the nasal juggle groove. And then on the other side, it's the mid cheek groove. The key thing about this is getting how it curves upwards and inwards because it's really tracing the infraorbital margin, which is the skeletal landmark under the skin. The mid cheek groove starts at the middle point of the eye, but it moves laterally, which is to the outside and down, separating the cheek from the cheek fat. The mid cheek groove really helps to form this kind of triangular shape that's wedged in underneath the eye and above the cheek fat. And I like to think of this as like this little tiny island that's right there and as we get older it becomes more apparent. The upper boundary of this area is called the palpabromolar groove, right? I mean, listen bro, come up with a heck of a name. That's the upper part of this triangular area that the mid cheek groove really sets off. In this case, this is actually the continuation of the infraorbital margin as it comes around and moves its way to the outside and up to the side of the eye. Now, if we look at the buccal region of the face, there are two lines that can really help you make sense of the folds in an older person's face. They're called the juggle groove or furrow and the associate juggle groove or furrow. But I gotta warn you, man, I, I saw these in an anatomy text a long time ago, and I haven't seen them since, but they exist. If you look at Jean-Claude Van Damme, it's there. If you look at Jeremy Irons, it's there. The juggle groove really separates the nasolabial fat pad and the medial fat pad from the middle cheek fat pad. And the associate juggle groove separates the middle cheek fat pad from what's really kind of the temporal and cheek fat pad, the lateral temporal and cheek fat pad coming around the outside of the face. Can you see how this starts to make things easier having these simple lines that really kind of divide up the face into these really easy to navigate routes, right? We've got two more lines to look at and these are gonna help us understand the mouth area. The first one is the marionette line. This moves from the inside corner of the mouth down and it separates the depressor anguli oris from the depressor labi inferioris. And it creates this kind of little valley between these two forms. And as it comes down, it leads quite naturally into the mental crease, which separates the mouth area from the chin area. And there you go. Now, most importantly, write down the names that you're seeing on the screen that, that you've seen me describe. Make sure that you have written down all of these names so that you can practice them. Because it's only in practice that you're gonna get better and you're really going to keep and pull these into your heart because that's what you've gotta do. You gotta memorize these things. You're gonna be able to then take this map and apply it to everybody else's face. And once you've done that, you're gonna have an incredibly powerful tool that's gonna help you make short work of anybody's face. All right, good luck.